What is up everybody, it is King Kunta, and today I have five of the best instant respawn gold farms that you can do in World of Warcraft to make gold. So, if before we do anything else, I just want to go ahead and say, leave a like, comment, and even subscribe if you actually like the video and it helped you out. Thanks for watching, let's get into it. So, before I go ahead and get rid of all the gold that I can make off this, um, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the location. So, we are here in Northern Stragglethorn, and, well, we were actually in Stragglethorn Vale, sorry, in Northern Stragglethorn, and uh, we're right at this little location down here by the Mizha Ruins. Now, when you go to this little location right here, you're going to see a bunch of Moshog Witch Doctors. Now, these mobs are quite, quite interesting. They actually drop some insane transmog pieces that I honestly... When I found out that they even dropped these, I was I was a little bit concerned, like, of the fact that, like, they, they even had the ability to do that. I completely had no idea. So, um, these actually do have an ability to drop the first mate hat. Now, if you know anything about the first mate hat, you know that that is a very expensive transmog piece. And uh, it's super, super, it has a pretty high drop chance from these guys. It has about a .14 drop chance, which is crazy high for that. In addition to that, they also have a chance to drop the Hindenth Macaw, which is a battle pet that sells for about, uh, say about 20 to 40k on most servers. Some servers see it up to 60k, but it's really dependent. And uh, finally, there's just a bunch of other transmog pieces that they drop that are worth about 1 to about up to 4k, just to help you fill up the auction house. I like to call them filler pieces. So, in order to farm this farm the most efficient way possible, you're going to want a group of about 3 to 4 people in order to make these instant respawn. Now, if you are a druid uh, who can just swap in and out of flight form like I am, uh, it's going to be a lot easier on you. So, there are basically three clumps that really spawn in this area. This clump right here that I am at, there is a bigger clump in this little area around this tree, and then there is also another clump back here. So, ideally, you will have one person here, one person there, and then one person in the ruins and you should be just fine and ideally you guys will just have a timer set up to tell everybody to loot every two to three minutes now if you are gonna run this farm solo it is possible and uh, I have run it solo before and I've also run it with groups I can tell you that running it with a group is probably the best way to do it because solo can get a little annoying and it can also be a little tedious at some times so uh, just to start things off, I'll just go ahead and show you my route. So I go ahead and I just start here if I were doing this solo, just so you guys know. If you're not doing this solo, don't even do this. Just have other people sit at different spots. Uh, also keep in mind this is a quest location. That's what makes these mobs uh, force respawn. Uh, so just if there's somebody killing these to try to get their quest, either I would, I would just let them get the loot personally. Uh, just let them finish up their quest and move on because you are kind of taking out a lot. Uh, of their time and stuff so uh, they're super easy to kill uh, especially if you have a uh, instant cast AOE ability uh, again having a druid is just so useful for these farms as you can see I was able just to loot these three so the person that you give this area in when you tell them to loot they should be able to loot pretty quickly because all of them are clumped in together in the same loot table and uh, ideally you kill the ones from there and what I do is I just follow a long with my druid and I will just run through and just make a circle as you can see that one actually force popped up just then uh, and I will just circle back and forth obviously not gonna kill that one because there's another character uh, or player killing that one but as you can see it's ideal you just want to make loops and do or er, set up your timer and if you don't know how to set up the timer all you have to do is type in uh, slash stopwatch Let's see here sorry about that I cannot see my keyboard Alright, slash stopwatch, and then that'll pull up a stopwatch for you that you're able to uh, just go ahead and start, and then every two minutes run around and loop. So, again, this farm is super simple, super easy to use. Um, it's really not difficult whatsoever. Um, it's really easy farm that I think people could pick up with no problem whatsoever, and you actually have a good, good, good chance to make a lot of gold with some of these items that drop here. And the fact that they just instant respawn is just the icing on the cake. 
So ideally you would just have a character that has a bunch of movement speed and an instant cast AoE ability that would just make it faster. As you can see here, since that other character is out there killing some of them, I can kind of just make these forests respawn as you saw there. They keep coming around. So if you do have a ton of people on your server or you're on a high pop server such as uh, mine, then you will actually have a lot more people running around through here and they, sh they might actually just keep popping up like this for you. I wouldn't rely on that. I would just keep circling it and making circles. But again, that's also an option for you guys if this is happening as you can see here called the Sprite Darter Hatchlin. Now some of you may or may not know about this battle pet already. It was heavily farmed about a year ago, but since then, people farming it, the rates have just kind of dropped. Not many people really take the time to come out here to come farm this battle pet. And the fact that it's RNG based, it, it's pretty easy to farm up, uh, it'll really only take a couple hours. Um, in most cases for most people. Now obviously you could get a little unlucky and it could take a while, but most cases we have people pulling you know one to two out of here every hour, so it can really work out well if you're willing to put the time in. We are located here in Fairless. We are located here at the Gordani Outpost. Now you want to be right in the middle section of this because that's where the biggest mob density is. They all spawn around this little campfire right here. There are a bunch of mobs outside on the surrounding hills, but ideally you want to kill the ones in the center of the campfire just because their respawn rate is pretty insane. Now, the Sprite Darter Hatchling, I got my numbers from the Undermine Journal just so you know. Um, on all US servers, the average is about 55,000 gold, so it's pretty good. Obviously, you want to check your server and see the current price that they're going for, but I highly recommend you come farm this because it can really be worth your time. Now, there may or may not be competition. I am on a high pop server and I have not found any, so if you're on anything lower than that, I, I have a hard time believing that you would really be farmed out of this spot. Now, these ogres are very unique and interesting for a few reasons. The first one being that they actually instant respawn. Yep, they literally keep on respawning and they will not stop. So, I'm going to go ahead and just show you right here. If we bind an instant cast AoE real quick, we can go ahead and just target all of the ogres running around here. And it's really not hard whatsoever, and especially if you have a class with some sort of ranged ability. Now, if you are a rogue or something like that, this farm can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie. I have done it on uh, melee DPS characters, but it is pretty irritating. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to disclose that to you guys now, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty irritating. Now, ideally you would have a group of people doing this farm together and you would have them all just sit in different little locations around here, maybe one up here, one up here, and then one back there so that you could just keep forcing them to respawn non-stop. And again, that does still work, so you can do that if you actually have a group of friends. But if you're a fat neck beard weeb like me, uh, you don't have any friends to farm with. I'm joking, I have a YouTube channel, I'm pretty sure people would farm with me, but I, I don't know, I just prefer solo farms. Maybe not for much longer though, because shout out Twitch. But um, this farm is super easy for you guys to do, and it it takes absolutely no effort. As you can see, I'm just running around in circles like this. Um, now obviously, having some sort of speed or movement increase can really help you guys. Uh, me being a druid, I can actually just mount up instantly and just fly over to the other corpses to go ahead and loot them. But since all the mobs are packed so tightly together, what we can actually do is we can do slash stopwatch, if I can spell it. And we can pop up stopwatch, and then we can start this, and then we can go around kill them all, as many as we can. And then after we hit one minute, or uh, about one minute and 30 seconds, I'll normally go ahead and just stop and go loot them all, and then go ahead and keep going. So it's not very difficult to go ahead and get started in this farm, in fact, it's fairly simple. Um, especially if you're a caster. Now again, if you're a melee DPS, it can be kind of annoying. That's why I recommend to every person that watches this video, I recommend you level a droid uh, if you're actually going to be seriously interested in gold farming because as you can see, it just makes my time here so much easier. Like, if I was on a hunter or something like that, it would still even take quite a while. Um, and you can actually get huge density from these. As you can see here, it's just non-stop as you see. All I'm doing is just spamming two different keys. I've got the auto target on my mouse, and then I'm spamming A for uh, Sunfire, so it's not very hard, uh, especially if you're a druid, because you can make this farm super, super efficient. And uh, just to give you guys an example of looting real quick, I'll go ahead. Uh, you do get a lot of silk cloth here, that is something I want to disclose uh, as well, so if you have a tailor or something uh, of the sorts, that's actually a good idea to bring here, because they will drop a lot of that. 
Now, um, really, that's it for the farm. Uh, as you can see, it's just an instant spawn farm. Takes absolutely no effort. And uh, you're going to be farming for the Sprite Darter Hatchling. And have you ever thought to yourself, huh, I just need to make 300k super quick and I need to make it disappear off the auction house really fast because I'm laundering money through World of Warcraft and I have an illegal drug business. I'm joking. I'm joking. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Anyways, it's King Kunta and uh, we have another gold farming video for you guys. And as you can see, these nerds right here are trying to go ahead and take me out, but we're not going to let that happen. So today we are located here in another burning crusade area. And as we can see, we are located down here in the bottom of Shadow Moon Valley. And yet, they are still hitting me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so as you can see, this farm has a ton of mobs. And they will just run after you like that. We don't have to do the quest. But we're going to be farming for one thing and one thing in particular. Now, it is a world drop in the Burning Crusade. And it's a world drop that sells for about 300k on most servers. And it's selling for about 100k on some high pop servers. So I would obviously check the market. Now, the item that we're going to be farming for are going to be called the Bracers of the Green Fortress. Now, these are plans, these are not the item. Now, the reason we're farming the plans is because anybody who knows anything about World of Warcraft knows that plans sell way better than anything else. Plans sell the best because people use the plans to make transmog items to sell those transmog items on the auction house. So, in order to go ahead and take advantage of this farm, all we're going to do is you're just going to come to this location that I am at right here. We're just going to want to come to the top. So, if I fly up real quick, I'll show you. So, as we can see, we have this little, like, curve little thing going on down here. And there's tons of these mobs all over. So, as we can see, uh, there's these Ellipsion, I think I'm saying that right, um, soldiers and the Spellbinders. So... What we're going to want to do is we're only going to really try to target the Spellbinders because they have the highest percentage drop chance for this item out of any mob in the Burning Crusade. Now it is a world drop, but these ones actually have been um, tested and found out that these are actually have a much higher chance of dropping the item. So the way that I run this farm is I essentially come up to this top portion right here. Now just so you know, these mobs do not instant respawn. But the fact that there's just so many of them makes it so you can literally just keep running this over and over and over again. So you're bound to get some good items. You're also going to get some greens and probably some other uh, trash mog, transmog uh, drops out of here as well. In addition to the nether weave and the transmog and stuff that you could get, you want to get the plans, obviously, because those are going to sell way quicker. Uh, you're also going to get nether weave and some other just basic stuff like that. So as we can see, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top. And essentially, if you're a druid, this farm is super easy for you because you have instant cast AoE spells. Any um, class that has any instant cast AoE uh, spells or abilities is going to automatically have an insane advantage in this farm. So as you can see, the easiest way that I've found to run this is literally just pull everything, pull about two or three groups, nuke them, and then keep going. Now since you killed these, you can literally just run back and loot them later. So ideally, you're going to do slash stopwatch in the chat below, and we're going to wait for it to hit about 1 minute and 30 seconds, and we're going to go back and loot all of them. But as you can see, it's super simple, and all you have to do is just run down here and nuke literally all of these mobs. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to get to the end over here, and then I'm just going to run back and loot all of it. And you'll see I actually pull a ton of loot um, just from these mobs alone here. So... As we can see, we kind of got them, they're a little bit spread out, which is kind of annoying. That's really the only main downfall of this farm. But if you're a droid, it's super easy because you can literally just pop a deflate form, pop back out, and loot everything and run back. As you can see, I just did that, and I also got some leg plates and stuff like that. So some actually good gear to go ahead and list on the auction house. But uh, as we can see here, I'm literally just flying through, and I'm just going to show you all the mobs now because this video would be so boring if you just watch me kill a bunch of stuff. So after you get to the, like the Crimson Watch, you can turn around and then start heading back down this trail down here. Now, I already nuked the mobs down there, so there might not be as many. But as you can see, there's tons of groups of them. Literally tons of groups of them. Now, you can start this farm from this area, too. You don't have to start it from where I started it. And I did nuke them earlier, and as you can see, they're all back up already. Um, so it's really super easy. You can actually just do this farm in just this area, then switch up to the top, and then go back to the bottom, and the mobs will actually be reset for you. 
Now, the reason I'm showing you guys this farm is not only because of the recipe, but you actually have the opportunity to get a bunch of other gear out of this farm as well. This farm is super, super simple to do. Literally anybody can do it. If you have World of Warcraft now, chances are you're at least higher than level like 85, and you should be able just to run here and nuke all of these. Now, just keep in mind that all these mobs do have a chance to drop it because it is a world drop but the spellbinders are the ones with the highest chance to drop it so ideally you're gonna try to target the spellbinders and uh, loot them quicker maybe than the rest of them but really there's just so many mobs that you can just keep doing this for hours this is a great farm if you need nether weave because you'll pull just an insane amount of it in this farm as you can see it's just me running up and down nuking 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 and non-stop that's really all this farm consists of uh, it's super simple to do. The only caveat is the fact that all the mobs are spread out so far away, and that's kind of irritating. But as you can see, uh, I just nuked all of these, and there's still more mobs coming up and stuff like that. So it's really easy just to go ahead and pick all this stuff up. Now, chances are you're probably one of the only people farming this, because not a lot of people uh, actually do attempt to go out and farm this. Um, just because of the location, most people actually get these drops out of raids just randomly. Uh, but targeting it like this with all these mobs actually makes it so much simpler than just running a raid and nuking the whole thing because you can literally just do this non-stop and uh, if you have some way of holding aggro and keeping them you can actually just bring them with you the entire way um, it's super easy to do as you guys can see literally just look at this I'm literally just standing here and they're just coming to me like how look at this what kind of mob density do you know anywhere in the game that has this kind of like ability like this it's very very good spot and not a lot of people take advantage of this you can also mine these for some like extra nodes and stuff and crystal fragments if you need them um, they will sell in the auction house not super well but they will um, but again you will pull a ton of nether weave and stuff like that so if you're a tailor this farm is really good for you and also if you're a, an enchanter you can disenchant all this stuff and a lot of people are looking for burning crusade mats because a lot of people that like have the plans uh, for these gauntlets uh, do actually need the items that you can actually get disenchanted out of them to make them so those are really the two options you have there and if you are a blacksmith and you just want to keep the plan and keep selling those bracers because they sell for a ton on the auction house and a lot of people are looking for them um, you can do that as well obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer than just selling the plans itself and uh, if you're looking for an easy cash out the plans sell for about 300k so it's easy to do and uh, if you're looking for some long-term gold investment, you can actually just keep the plans, make them, and keep selling those on the auction house. Now, this is really a market that's kind of been untapped in World of Warcraft, to my knowledge. Uh, from all the search and research that I've done on this, um, this farm is actually pretty good. And you guys should come check this out now as I post this video. Because I guarantee there's going to shoot up and there's going to be a ton on your auction house. As you can see, these mobs are already back up already. So this farm is super easy to do. Just run through it literally like requires no effort whatsoever just running around and AOEing stuff so it's not difficult and uh, I think you guys will really like it the spot has kind of died off a little bit there's not really many people farming it now I have covered this spot in the past just for the moats uh, that you can get here but since you can actually get the plans and some of the other world drops I just thought I'd bring it back into the limelight a little bit for you guys um, and this farm is very, very, very good. Now, I'm on a high pop server and there's no one here farming it. I'm sure after I post this video, there'll be a lot more. But this farm is basically like an insta spawn if you don't have a ton of competition. Because essentially, all you have to do is what I'm about to show you right here. So, we're just going to run to one of them and we're just going to nuke all of them. All these raging fire souls and then all the um, elementals that are made of wind. Uh, also drop stuff as well so they're very good as you can see mode of fire all this good stuff just dropped just like that so this farm is super easy to do as you can see here it's literally me just running around now unless you have insane godlike abilities in world of warcraft i don't think you're ever gonna run out of these because the respawn rate is like if you have no competition it's really like i want to say like 30 seconds maybe so they don't take very long but I have seen people actually run into times where they actually have ran out of mobs but that's only because they had competition I've never run out of mobs uh, without any competition and chances are there's not a lot of people doing this on your server right now and I'm just go ahead and showing you some of these um, items that you can get out of this now obviously they don't drop moats every single time so that's kind of annoying but you do get like lock boxes and good stuff like that and uh, 
yeah so there's really not a whole lot to this farm other than running around and killing all these as you can see kind of back where I started you can make a loop and uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and I'll just go ahead and show you uh, exactly where all the mobs are at and I know I didn't loot those but I've been running this farm for like hours so so mainly all the fire mobs spawn in here you have a bunch of wind one wind elementals that spawn around uh, on the edges and then also if you go ahead and follow back down through here uh, there's a couple of uh, earth like elementals down here and sometimes there are some water ones as you can see uh, that spawn there as well so if you do find yourself running out of mobs to actually go ahead and kill you can actually just go right back there though you respawn pretty quickly so after one loop you should be pretty much good um, now as you can see there are a bunch more wind ones back here too that you can pick up for loot as well so make sure that you don't forget these um, essentially what you can do with this farm is turn it into a forever loop is just keep looping around nuking all the mobs by the time you get back around they should be back up now this farm back in the day when we had realm hop was insanely overpowered like people abuse the heck out of it but now since we don't as much there's not really that many people bringing a ton of moats on the auction house anymore and this is a good opportunity for you guys to earn some extra gold fairly quickly as you can see uh, you don't need any special ability or anything obviously an instant cast AOE is probably the best route to go um, if you're rogue or something like shuriken toss just so you can actually like reach out and grab these mobs when you have to but as you can see there I just got a bunch of motes of air just like that and uh, it didn't take me very much time at all and obviously if you're a druid this farm is super easy because it makes looting fairly fairly quick because uh, you can just pop into flight form over there now um, as you can see we're waiting for some of the elementals to come back up so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go down up oh, they're starting to come back up and uh, I'm gonna go down here and kill all these as well so that we don't really ever run out of these um, and uh, yeah, so that's really all that's involved in this farm. It's super easy, super, super simple to do, and it uh, doesn't take like much time at all, and it's like a fairly quick respawn rate. Like it really, really is quick, so I, I think you guys will definitely really like this farm. And I know I just said really like a million times, but I don't even care. I'm not re-recording this. I've done it like two times now. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my method to you. I promise it works zero times on girls, but it will make you gold in World of Warcraft. So today I have another amazing farm. Today we are located up here in Bashir Landing on the Blades Edge, Edge Mountains in Outland. Now in order to get here, all I did was take the portal to Shatrat City and then I flew all the way to Blades Edge Mountains right up here towards Bashir Landing. So why are we at Bashir Landing, you may ask? Oh, and I also want to do, uh, I don't know if I pointed out earlier, we are 100% weeaboo friendly on this channel, and actually if you are a weeaboo, we're maybe a little bit more friendly. Also, go follow the Instagram in the comment section that I linked down there, because you can follow my personal Instagram now, and DM me funny things, please, because I really want that. Anyways, so we're here, and the item we're going to be farming is going to be called the Stormhelm. Now, the Stormhelm sells for about uh 100 to 200k on all servers average across the u.s um and these numbers were taken from the undermine journal journal just so you know but on my server it happens to be at about 300k so how do we farm up the planes for the storm helm you may ask well that is another thing that i'm going to teach you so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and give you a little overview so basically there's this big little camp full of Bar Bashir Arcanist, I believe is how you pronounce it. I don't know, I'm stupid, so maybe I messed it up. But uh, as you can see, they're basically all around these purple little portal things. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kill the Arcanist. Now, you can actually kill uh, these two, the Spell Thieves, but uh, they don't drop nearly as good loot. And ideally, you really want the Arcanist because you're trying to go ahead and get the plans for the helm that we were talking about earlier. Now, the reason I'm showing you guys this farm is because not only are you going to be farming for the plans if you do kill all these like Bashir raiders and stuff like that uh, they will drop you a crap ton of nether weave cloth so if you're a tailor you actually can actually make some nether weave bags or something out of this and start listing those on the auction house quite quickly I'm not gonna lie I filled up tons of bolts of nether weave in this spot alone and I have spent tons of my time in World of Warcraft farming this spot so I kind of got a pretty good method so the mobs uh, do not instant respawn and it can be a little challenging sometimes but if you run it the way I'm running it right here uh, you will actually never make it so you run out of mobs so 
basically their respawn timer is at this point where if you just walk through here oh yeah you can get motes of mana from these guys by the way um but if you just walk through here uh as you see me doing just le leisurely you don't have to loot uh every time like i'm doing right here but uh if you just walk through you will actually come back around in the circle and they will be back up for you so that's a little tip that i can go ahead and give you guys right now to make this farm a little bit easier uh on you improve your farming quality of life if you will and uh it's really not you know that difficult either as you can see i'm just walking around nuking all these down and it's pretty mellow chill farm now the reason i'm showing you the plans for this now just so you know they are a rare drop and uh, they are a world drop so they can drop from anything but they have the best chance to be dropped from the arcanist and if you do get this item to drop I guarantee you someone's gonna literally pay for a realm switch to come buy it off of you because the amount of gold that you can make with the plans for the storm helm is absolutely ridiculous the storm helm actually sells for so much that most people when they get the plans uh, they're mostly listed on the auction house as an accident uh, so like I've actually seen listings for the storm helm for about 700 gold uh, on the auction house and there's people literally just sitting up there waiting for plans like that and they're sniping them so uh you know obviously those get yoinked off pretty quickly but if you do have the plans for the storm helm um and you're a blacksmith i recommend you go ahead and just learn the plans and use that and sell the storm helm uh as its own because you're gonna make a ton more profit just selling it uh than you will for the plans obviously the plans is like a one-time profit but the storm helm you can keep making over and over again if you have the materials so you kind of see where i'm going with this and uh, just so you know, there are some outer little circles that do have mobs out here uh, that if you run out of time basically and they're not back up by then, you can actually run uh, to the location that I'm at right here and uh, you can come swipe these guys real quick if you're waiting for the other mobs to come up because you're a little bit too fast and you're way better than King Kunta. So that's all that's really involved in this farm. It's very simple, nothing complicated. And uh, it's just key binding in auto attack with a uh, auto target really. Um, it doesn't really require a lot more than that. You can literally just run around here just just like spamming spacebar or something if you bound it to that and just go ahead and go crazy. Go stupid. Hey, but yeah, you can literally do that. It's no problem. And uh, it's actually quite good farm. I enjoy doing this one. It's nice and peaceful. You're just running around in circles really and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort either.